Gulf Stream waters This land was made for you and me Welcome back, everybody, to the People Who Speak radio show. I'm your host for tonight, Steve Johnson. The People Who Speak show normally airs every Tuesday from 6 to 7 Pacific and 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern on the BBS radio network. You can participate during the show with call-in questions for our guests, toll free in the United States and Canada on 1-888-429-5471. This is a fantastic show tonight. We're talking to two very special guests right here, an anti-nuclear activist and an outspoken advocate of human rights. We are talking tonight to Sister Megan Rice, 85, a Roman Catholic nun of the Society of the Holy Child Jesus, and a fellow activist, Mr. Michael Wally, who is also part of a group that broke into a nuclear facility and spent time in prison. We are very honored to have them with us on the show today. Welcome to the People Speak Radio Show, Sister Rice and Mr. Wally. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful to have you here. Can you, uh, first of all, Sister Rice, can you please describe to our listeners the course of events that actually got you incarcerated into a, a facility um, because of your activism? Well, we were <coughs> very concerned when we realized that uh, the United States government had appropriated uh, probably up to $10 billion dollars uh, certainly six uh, billion dollars in the one facility at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where the first uh, fuel for the first three highly uh, enriched fuel uh, uranium fuel was produced back in 1943, and has been continued to being produced for to fuel the nuclear weapons that have continued to be made since World War II when they were used in 19. 19- August of 1945, and we we needed to um, remind the people, remind the workers uh, that this was all uh, illegal work according to the United States Constitution, which holds uh, the United States uh, accountable to all uh, international laws and treaties which it signs uh, (coughs) and supersedes uh, any activity that... um, the United States uh, are, it, it intends to do. So the pr- construction and the production and certainly the use of ever again nuclear bombs has been um, since at least 1960, uh, 1968, 1970, when the Non-Proliferation Treaty was signed, illegal criminal activity. So we wanted to go in to explain that to the workers and to try to end and call them to transform that work into that which is sustainable uh, and uh, life-enhancing, which is very possible to be done. Wow. So so your protest basically was inspired because you believe that what these workers are doing is contributing to a criminal activity that is state-sponsored and state-organized. Exactly. Goodness me. Uh, Mr. Michael Wally, in your opinion, uh, nuclear weapons... Now, are they part of the pursuit of life, and liberty, and, and peace, and happiness for all mankind? No, they are of the spirit of anti-grace. They are illegal. They are state terroristic in their nature, and they must be eradicated. And what is the threat that nuclear weapons poses to us as a people on this earth? Uh, it uh, threatens uh, all human life with uh, extinction. It uh, 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 it, it, it threatens all all of the people uh, falsely. Uh, it is said in various nations that uh, nuclear weapons are providing uh, security and they're uh, stockpiling, use, refurbishment, perpetuation is uh, 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 is said to be serving the national defense needs of various nations. This is uh, out and out on truth. They are. Uh, 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 violations of the uh, security rights. We all have a right to security of person. Uh, we cannot accept the situation in which uh, uh, criminal weapons are being used uh, with the false in the false uh, uh, concept that they are providing defense for any anybody in the room. 
Well, the, they, they posed the, uh, the whole nuclear thing. They, they invited it into our society as being part of uh, to help us get cheap energy and, and clean fuel. But that hasn't been the case. Energy prices have gone up. We've seen these, uh, the, these uh, things that they're using, the, the uranium and the plutonium, being used for nefarious purposes, for not only defense, but for offensive weapons. Uh, now, Mr. Michael Wally and Sister Megan, uh, in your opinion, do we need nuclear weapons at all? Of course, there's no need for nuclear weapons. Uh, <coughs> as Michael has said, uh, they're mutually assured destruction, uh, and that's the only thing that could ever happen. Uh, obviously, there would be retaliation if one ever were used, but it would be against all laws of humanity, the laws of war and, and the non-proliferation treaty laws and many others, uh, even to consider planning and constructing nuclear bombs. So um, certainly they're of no use. We don't want to destroy our planet. The existence of them, the, uh, the proliferation of them, the modernization of them, and uh, the uh, talk about perpetuating their existence by the U.S. government at uh, Oak Ridge and uh, Los Alamos and various uh, 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 vessels on the high seas and ports and nuclear weapon submarines, that's a clear indication that the uh, rule of international law has been thrown out the window long ago and that uh, uh, various nations of the world allied to the United States uh, have every intention of continuing its uh, faulting efforts to dictate human affairs. Now, now, first of all, what got you started? What got, in, what got you inspired to follow uh, the group into this uh, anti-nuclear activism, Mr. Michael Wally? First of all, I was uh, uh, encouraged to join by um, uh, Sister Megan Rice. She was the one who selected the Oak Ridge uh, Rye 12 uh, U.S. government uh, nuclear weapons terrorist site as the site for our uh, protest. We are, as a Plowshare uh, group, we are part of a uh, uh, actions that have started ever since uh, uh, 1980, uh, over 100 of them. Uh, have happened. Uh, we had meetings before we did it in uh, July the uh, 28th of 2012, the United Nations Year of the Collective. Uh, Sister Megan was the one who named our action. Wow. So, so Sister Megan, what got you started in uh, protesting this particular avenue of anti-humanity? Uh, <coughs> my awareness of the evil uh, that uh, <coughs> is involved in the intention to construct such a bomb uh, goes back many decades. I happen to live close to the uh, origin of the Manhattan Project, secret as it was, and uh, at the age of 10 and 11, I knew that secret work was going on in the physics building uh, at Columbia University, which was the beginnings of the Manhattan Project. And I knew that anything that is secret must be evil because uh, uh, it, it has to be hidden from the public. And, um, but I didn't really understand, even after the bombs were dropped uh, on uh, August 6th and August 9th, uh, the terrible repercussions <clears throat> of this construction, in, uh, which ended in 1945. I mean, at least the, those three bombs were constructed. Um, but gradually, I uh, continue to be aware of, of um, the actual makeup of nuclear weapons and, and uh, to hear the stories uh, from my own uncle, who was present at um, Nagasaki six weeks after the bomb, of uh, what he was able to see and what he was able to do uh, during those months, uh, observing and trying to help the people but he was a Marine, and there were no people to help, actually, uh, at that time. Uh, and so uh, we realized the, uh, just the utter, um, utter uh, unthinkable that had occurred on those two days, August 6th and August 9th. And um, from then on, uh, we were always uh, trying to attend any efforts um, people, who, those who were acting as plowshares activists. We attended their trials, and we heard the um, explanations of why 
they had to, in conscience, <clears throat> act to exit to uh, uh, resist and expose weapons. <laughs> And, and and so I knew that uh, I also, in whatever way I could, I spent 10 years at Nevada test site where we tried to <clears throat> help people to be aware that we had uh, out on the beautiful sacred desert of Nevada, uh, the size of the state of Rhode Island, where 1,000 of these nuclear bombs had been tested over the years from 1948 right through to 1993 at great cost to the land, the air, the water, the indigenous people whose land it was, and the downwinders who farmed for 50, 100 miles uh, in diameter away from the Nevada test site. So I had plenty of information about it, <clears throat> and therefore I was responsible to act. Wow. Now, now, it's one thing seeing the devastation that uh, a nuclear bomb causes, but the weapons they're making today from depleted uranium-238, they're putting it in tank shells, in mortar shells, in, in uh, weapon shells, in bullets. They're putting these uh, nuclear waste into the, the small arms. How bad is that? I mean, that's even worse because you don't even see the effects that that's having long-term residual effects that it has on the populations of the people of these places. Yes, I believe you're you're um, referring to depleted, as they call it, depleted uranium, and, and it's highly uh, <clears throat> resistant to penetration. And um, but it does cause um, an aerosol. It aerosolizes the um, tiny particles of, of, as you say, this um, these uranium isotopes into the atmosphere, and people tr will be breathing it in for decades <clears throat> and and uh, it will be and it is already we know from the wars in in, in Iraq and other places in the Middle East the the uh, aftermath um, <clears throat> of the use of depleted uranium not only on weapons but also on tanks because it is so impenetrable uh, when it's an alloy that's used to cover the tanks um, or other vehicles uh, of war, and as you say, to coat the weapons themselves. Uh, yes, depleted uranium is another form of, of um, mass extinction, it's really. Another form of nuclear weapon, yeah. That's right. Now, my question for both of you is the nuclear industry is one that I see, myself personally, as being very anti-life and pro-profit. Do you think these big companies like Raytheon and Boeing and Northrop Grumman, these weapons industries, do you think they care that they're, they're a threat to the actual global human health? Do you think they care uh, enough because they're making so much money? Yeah, I would say that they're not at all concerned about uh, peace. They're not concerned about accepting uh, uh, Jesus Christ's peace offer when he said, uh, my peace I give you, not as the uh, world uh, gives it. The, they're not concerned about the common good, or uh, they're not concerned about the rule of international law. The uh, Alliant Tech Systems Company uh, had its head, corporate headquarters at Edina, Minnesota. They produced the uh, uh, depleted uranium munitions and also the, the cluster bombs, both of which are illegal. And uh, the uh, I believe the Persian Gulf Syndrome, by the way, of the first Bush war in Iraq uh, resulted from the uh, unlawful use of depleted uranium munitions by the war criminal activity of the U.S. government in that particular war. And we know that from the very beginning, uh, even the, the leader of the first uh, of the Manhattan Project, when after the, the testing of that first bomb, uh, the Trinity bomb at Alamogordo in New Mexico, and he knew that uh, that the bombs worked, he also knew and felt believed firmly that one should never be used, let alone used on people. And uh, when asked uh, after the the, the, the uh, atrocities of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, he, uh, uh, about which he had been lied um, by, by le leaders of the um, administration at the time, people who were in charge of the actual uh, deployment of the three that were first produced. Mm. They were told that they would only be dropped on uh, the Pacific 
and they knew that they were going to be dropped on land. Not exactly where, but it turned out to be on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And he said from then on, he knew uh, that this was just a gold rush, and it became the beginning of a gold rush. And there was an incredible amount of lying, as there had been from the very beginning of the project. People were lied to as as they were held, as information was kept in secret as well. Well, that's one thing that the government does very well, is lie to its people about what it's doing and the reasons why it does it. Now, I don't think they, uh, they fully realized what they were doing when they decided to drop the bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. The, the, the action that they gave, the, the, the order that they gave to eliminate human lives at that cost, at that price, or so many lives instantly all at once, that shows that there is an anti-human streak within these people. Do you not agree? Well, I think that it's hard to make a judgment because of this incredible secrecy. The very few of the people were responsible for making the decision, and those that were made responsible for carrying it out did not know fully. And uh, so I, I would tend not to be judging those that were actually implementing the, the at the beginning stage, inter- mm. and, uh implementing the orders, but uh, certainly the individuals who, who were making the orders were extremely uh, responsible and therefore guilty. Um, but uh, uh, actually, uh, it, the same secrecy happens today. I think many of the workers at Y-12 uh, Oak Ridge facility don't really know what they're doing from day to day. And also, there are very few jobs, and some some people have to do that kind of work in order to have enough money to pay for their children's breakfast in this day and age. So the, the, it's the, the originator, the, the, the system that is evil uh, and, and causing people to have to be doing such kind of work in order to, as we say, survive. Absolutely, because if they don't do this work, there's always going to be somebody else who take that job who will do that work. Some people don't care who they work for. uh, Until we can convince, and I think it is possible that we can convince our government and the public that other things can be done, that just as you have said, it's useless to continue making nuclear bombs, and most of the public don't know that this is being continued. We know that just from speaking to individuals. They don't even know that we still have nuclear weapons, and we have at least 7,000 of them. Uh, And, of course, none of them hopefully will ever be used. So it's a whole transformation in thinking. It has to happen through education in universities, colleges, high schools, and grammar schools. And people will realize, I think, it very easily they will be, uh, they would be recognizing that if we can make bombs, we can unmake them, and we can transform uh, things into that which is life enhancing and really needed. And the appropriations can be reappropriated to that which is, first of all, to dismantle the nuclear weapons, and then to. Uh, do what we can do in order to um, create a transformed uh, economic system. Amen. Well, let's hope for that. When I grew up as a young child in the 70s and 80s, we grew up with the specter of nuclear threats um, all the time. The the Cold War was in, in well swing. It was in big effect. But back then, we only knew about nukes as far as being hydrogen bombs and atom bombs and nitrogen bombs. Today, they're given very catchy names like Bunker Busters and Mother of All Bombs and Daisy Cutters, and and they're given cool names that sound really cool. Do you think that's part of the image of nuclear weapons, that they're changing the very nature of how uh, people perceive them? Well, uh, there is a whole um, section of, of the Department of Defense that does nothing but create propaganda and, and uh, with our technology today, um, the, the misinformation can be 
uh, very effectively uh, communicated uh, to the public. So I think you're absolutely right, and we have to uh, do all that we can to uh, return to, uh, first of all, a, a press that's independent of um, mm. being persuaded by the, lo- the uh, military-industrial complex to miseducate the public, which we know has been happening. So you're absolutely right. And we all need to, our awareness has to grow. And uh, this critical thinking that is so necessary uh, when we uh, look at uh, what, what is happening and why it is happening and, and, uh, and try to find those who are the objective uh, investigative journalists who are giving us the truth in the alternative press. Do you, do you really believe that there's uh, still independent investigative journalists out there? I do believe that a lot of the journalists we have uh, had ha- have had in the past, today, they're nothing but repeaters. They're not reporters anymore. They don't report on anything. They just repeat what they're told on the news. Do you still think that there's independent reporters out there? Yes, I do. I know some of them. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. It's not that everybody is not uh, alerted to it, and but many people are. Yes, you have... Um, and, and not only reporters, you have writers, you have professors who are spending their time um, writing the truth. You have Eric Schlosser as one. You have Elaine uh, Scary at Harvard for producing her book, uh, the, the uh, M- Nuclear Monarchy, shows how our um, democratic rights have been... Um, abrogated in just even the way we allow uh, only one person in the country to decide when and where a nuclear weapon will be used. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty scary. Now, for those who have just joined us here on the BBS Network, we're talking to Sister Sister Megan Rice and Mr. Michael Wally, two anti-nuclear weapons activists who were imprisoned for two years for breaking into a nuclear weapons facility to alert the workers as to the work that they were doing Uh, against humanity. Uh, Please visit their website on transformplowshares.wordpress.com if you get a chance. Now my question, uh, Sister Megan, has the Catholic Church supported your protests in any way? Yes, uh, well, I I don't think we have heard too much, particularly uh, as individuals, but we, our broad work is the work of of condemning and um, trying to create alternatives to ever again uh, the construction or uh, production or planning to use nuclear weapons. And that certainly has been stated formally many times uh, by the uh, worldwide Catholic Church in its documents. And especially now, Francis of Rome has condemned them when we had the excellent Uh, conference in Vienna in November, December of of 2014 sent a special message to all the uh, participants of that uh, non-proliferation gathering in Vienna uh, condemning ever again the use of nuclear weapons. Uh, I got a question for Mr. Michael Wally. How have your family handled you uh, being so active and, and uh, doing these protests against the nuclear industry? Have they supported you as well? Well, uh, I haven't been real, real uh, you know, close. It's not like we have a hotline going on between us. But uh, you know, they uh, they didn't poll them for their various uh, uh, opinions about the. Uh, they're not real closely involved. Many of them in supporting the. Uh, condemnations given over the many years by the Roman Catholic Church of nuclear weapons, including the condemnation of nuclear weapons by this uh, uh, Catholic advocacy journalist woman named Dorothy Day, who condemned them one month after the Hiroshima and Nagasaki war criminal bombings. His uh, uh, Holiness Saint John the Twenty Third, as Pope, uh, condemned nuclear weapons. He died on the, the June the third of the sixty-three. And various uh, uh, enlightened people, Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, he condemned nuclear weapons at the age of 30 in 1959. Uh, all, all sorts of uh, uh, enlightened people uh, have uh, 
to be known that these are an evil to be uh, opposed at every instance and to be eradicated uh, over for over 2,700 years. Prophets of God, uh, Micah and uh, Isaiah, have been forecasting the day when we shall have total uh, global demilitarization. It's in the cards. It's going to happen. We have a, a surety and hope of these things, and they, we must be uh, you know, uh, firm in our hope and uh, uh, hard at work as peacemakers. Now, why is it that uh, people just don't get it that nuclear weapons are bad? Did Chernobyl not send a message to us that of, of uh, the destructive awesomeness and, and how long, in fact, the half-life of this thing takes thousands and thousands of years for this stuff to deplete in the environment? Do people just not, uh, not get it, how poisonous this stuff is? Go ahead. Well, the, the Koreans have a saying, uh, whose bread you eat, their song you'll sing. Uh, many of the uh, employees of the uh, that are hard at work at the criminal activity uh, of, uh, of the U.S. government, uh, uh, nuclear weapons modernization and uh, uh, nuclear weapons pr uh, proliferation in violation of the 1968 Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, they make a great deal of money, and uh, as do the uh, the guard companies that guard these various uh, uh, places ar uh, uh, around the world. Uh, they, uh, you cannot serve both God and money. Uh, they do what they do in secrecy. Uh, the New Testament counsels against secrecy. Uh, Judas worked as a spy. He took uh, money from the corrupt priests. He betrayed the Prince of Peace into the hands of the military government uh, for money. And uh, there's a big. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of clarity that is uh, going on, and there's a, a crease in, an increased uh, awareness that's very encouraging about the the nature of uh, of the will of God in human affairs uh, concerning all of this uh, war mongering and war based economy and illegal weapons and contempt for the United Nations and the rule of international law. Well, we can only hope uh, that one day people will start to see that this, this is actually happening to us as a people, collectively, and, and we realize that the borders are just invisible lines in the sand that they have drawn for us to divide us up between our different nations of people, when really we are all the same species, we are all the same race of people, we are the human race. Do you not agree with that? Amen, brother. There's, in India, they've got a Hindu bomb. In uh, Israel, they've got a Judaic bomb. In Pakistan, Pakistan they've got an uh, Islamic bomb. Uh, uh, in North Korea, they've got a communist bomb. In China, they've got a mixed capitalist communist bomb. Uh, in uh, France and the United States, the U.K., uh, various other countries, they've got a... Uh, you know, uh, uh, religious plural, uh, pluralism bomb. Uh, all, there's a lot of misuse of the name of religion to support the warmongering and the bomb. We, we've got to stop worshipping the bomb and send the bomb back to hell where it came from. Absolutely. What do you feel about that, Sister Megan Rice? Well, I think we need to also remember that we don't hear all the good news. Um, we, do we re how many of us are aware that after the um, <clears throat> non-proliferation uh, event in last April of 2015, April and May, uh, <clears throat> when uh, uh, the review meeting lasted one month at the United Nations, and they could not come to an agreement still on the final uh, wording of that document, which had been, has been signed since, 19, uh, since two, 1970. And uh, so... Three, 108 countries out of the close to 190 <clears throat> United Nations countries um, walked out <clears throat> on the meeting determined that they would uh, take a new stand, a humanitarian pledge, recognizing the reality that nuclear weapons must be eliminated and just work not for the non-proliferation but for the elimination of nuclear weapons, weapons because they threaten all of life on this planet. Absolutely. And I don't know how many people know that, but uh, we need to back it, we need to follow it up, and we need to keep asking our Congress people, uh, when are we going to uh, come around and uh, implement uh, the uh, treaties that have been signed? So it, it's really up to everybody who's listening tonight to look into this. That, well, um, we still don't have uh, a, a, a condemnation of nuclear weapons as weapons of mass destruction in writing. 
but 103 nations are working toward that goal. Well, archiving the crimes that have been done by the senators and the, and the uh, representatives in the last decade in America, I'm looking forward to the day when all of these um, uh, liars and deceivers are going to get thrown in jail. But uh, this is the People Who Speak Radio Show. I'm your host on BBS Radio, talking with special guests tonight, Sister Megan Rice and Mr. Michael Wally, live on Internet Radio. And we'll be right back with our guests and audience questions after this short message break. If you care about humanity, if you care about stability for the human race, then you would care enough to stop funding Israel. Subscribe now. You're listening to the People Who Speak radio show, coming to you live across America and across the world. I'm your host from Australia, Steve Johnson, and we're back with our two guests tonight. We have an amazing soul, two amazing souls, Sister Megan Rice and Mr. Michael Wally, both anti-nuclear protesters uh, who have basically done the hard call. They, they've basically done the walk. They've walked the walk, they talk the talk, and they've gone to prison for it. Can you tell us a bit more about your arrest in Tennessee, Mr. Michael Wally and Sister Megan Rice? What, what exactly happened when you were arrested? Go for it, Sister. Okay. Uh, we, we spent um, <clears throat> from quarter to five in the morning until close to five o'clock doing the action that we had planned to do after we had passed through the three perimeter fences uh, quite easily in a matter of probably less than 15 minutes. And uh, we had uh, done the work that many of you will know, you may have read about it, of us putting messages of truth, with spray paint on the wall, and uh, uh, pouring sacred human blood on the building to remind people of the, uh, of the terrible results of uh, extermination of human, of, of all life, which is um, so, great, so sacred uh, by the use of any nuclear weapon anywhere. And uh, also um, labeling the building as a crime scene with crime scene tape and... Um, <clears throat> other activities just uh, probably 10 or 15 minutes we saw a, a, a van moving in slowly um, from the far end of this huge uh, highly enriched uranium facility um, uh, uh, coming toward us and we knew that that was probably a security officer so we were ready to welcome him and um, we had a statement to read to him and he was um, able to listen uh, uh, when he arrived there he said to on the cell phone they are peace protesters you better send some more security or something like that and uh, so we, we asked him if we could read our message and we read the message which uh, uh, states our reason for having been there uh, as people of faith inspired by others uh, trying to uh, live out that prophecy of beating swords into plowshares so that uh, God would teach us God's ways and that, that there would be war no more. And um, so he listened carefully, and um, we get told him the reason why we had used the blood and the candles and the white rose of forgiveness and the crime scene tape and left an indictment which points out the... Um, the, the uh, uh, laws which um, uh, the United States uh, has broken by the work that's conducted at that facility. And then by that time, we had, after reading it uh, and offering him bread, which he didn't accept from us, uh, the next van came, and then two officers were in that, and they came out and they, they handcuffed us. And that was like about quarter after five in the morning, and then we were made to lie down and wait around uh, on our backs. Uh, uh, and then uh, for about five or six hours while they decided what they would do with us. And I suppose they had uh, messages from higher authority that we were to be taken to jail. So at about 11 o'clock that morning, we were the three of us were uh, driven together in one car, sitting together in the back seat 
to the a local county jail where we were kept for uh, uh, hearings in in the court the next week after that about a, a week and then eventually we were released because they couldn't come they had to have a trial so the trial wasn't until the following may and and then after the following that was may of 2013 we were sent to osilla georgia which is a detention center and stayed there for the next uh seven or eight months and then the remaining time in uh, other detention uh, facilities or two prisons, federal prisons, wow. and uh, for a total of about 25 months. Now, what do you remember of your uh, arrest there in Tennessee, Mr. Michael Wally? Can you relate to us your experiences? Well, uh, we planned the, the event very carefully, and uh, we were concerned uh, Sister Megan was 82 years of age at the time, and we talked about uh, different things that were, might happen, you know, we might be attacked by dogs, we might be shot in the lethal force zone, we might have armed guards accosting us. We, the subject even came up when we were on the long uh, walk uh, through the woods in the middle of the night, walking with flashes. They, when we were planning, uh, we even discussed the possibility of what we would do if we ran into a squad of Al-Qaeda. Uh, that didn't happen. Uh, we, we got to the, uh, the site. We had asked for uh, God to use us as instruments of peace. And we, uh, what we did was in the spirit of, uh, of uh, you know, it's law-abiding citizens of the world. We're citizens of heaven. We're citizens of the international community. We did it with benignity. We have hatred for no one. We, we oppose nuclear weapons wheresoever they uh, exist, and they ought to stop using government the governance authority to retain them, to stockpile them, to threaten with them, to uh, uh, falsely say that these nuclear weapons are uh, protecting anybody's security or even that they can be uh, legitimately possessed in the name of uh, defending anybody. They're, they're threatening us all. They've, we've got to get rid of them on a priority basis. Absolutely. We were, we were taken into custody, and then uh, at, after several hours in broad daylight, they... They uh, took our names, and then they uh, uh, they, they put us in a, a, a paddy wagon, uh, uh, no, not a, uh, a police car, you know, and then they took us to a suburban Knoxville, uh, uh, not uh, Blount County Jail, and we were held there for, uh, Sister Megan and I, we agreed about six days later to uh, uh, reappear on later court appearances. And we, uh, we had our freedom for uh, uh, over nine months until the trial started in, uh, in May of uh, 2013. The uh, Lamar Alexander Parkway is one of the three, I heard, worst prisons in the entire United States as a result of being a prisoner for over two years. I saw uh, uh, a great deal of the lack of humanity and the lack of U.S. government compliance with its legal obligations concerning the treatment of prisoners. I saw two men get, get, getting uh, uh, tasered, and uh, then I, uh, I was, uh, wasn't at all surprised right in front of the uh, the. the, uh, the uh, Blount County Jail, where we were uh, imprisoned in uh, suburban uh, uh, Knoxville, uh, the street that goes right by it is named uh, the uh, uh, Lamar Alexander Parkway. Well, Senator Lamar Alexander is one of the two U.S. senators representing the state of Tennessee. He, he's been very uh, uh, vigorously, uh, enthusiastically supporting this Antichrist nuclear weapons uh, uh, industry that is one of the driving engines of the eastern Tennessee area, and it deploys thousands of people. And uh, he should be ashamed of himself, and he, he should uh, uh, work instead to do a to get born again and uh, work to get rid of these weapons. Well, anybody who supports nuclear weapons, in my book, is a very, very dangerous person. Now, right here on the line, we've got a caller in from Ohio. We've got Dave on the line. Are you there, Dave? Yeah, I'm actually calling from North Carolina. I really appreciate this. Um, sure, go ahead. I, uh, I actually have two questions. Uh, first, I want to say I, I very much admire your um, wonderful efforts. Um, I admire all the Plowshares actions. Um, when I lived in Baltimore, I used to worship at Jonah House. Um, I, uh, I particularly admire the fact that you did something very unusual and that you pleaded guilty. Um, I'm an advocate of um, people who do civil disobedience, at least considering pleading guilty, as Gandhi always did. I know it's not for everybody. Um, why is it you folks decided to plead guilty? Excuse me, we did not plead guilty. We pleaded 
uh, not guilty to all four of the charges, and we continued to plead not guilty when the trial started with the two remaining felony charges, of which we were found guilty on uh, May the 8th of 2013. So the answer is that we uh, continually, from start to finish, right up until the present moment, we pleaded uh, not guilty of all charges. Well, what we did, we accepted the fact that we had done what we had done because we were exposing and opposing the existence of nuclear weapons at that facility. The actions that we performed were positive, uh, life-enhancing actions. Uh, They were not destructive of the building. Yeah. We we believe that... We believe that is, we were acting lawfully in, in, in compliance with our Nuremberg Principles uh, obligation as citizens to oppose the crimes of the United States government. Uh, that's what we did, and we continue to oppose these ongoing crimes. Well, that is what's popular among people who do civil disobedience in this country. My second question is a, a, a difficult question, but I, I, I have guarantee you that I will be loving and forgiving even if I'm not happy with your answer. You stated earlier that um, you believe that there are many alternative media personalities who um, are not just repeaters. Um, uh, I am also a 9-11 truth activist, and so many pacifists uh, won't even discuss the evidence that the official story is a lie. Um, Do you believe that Amy Goodman is one of these uh, alternative media um, commentators who is uh, not just a repeater? Absolutely. I was very impressed by uh, Amy Goodman. Three days after our uh, May the 16th release, uh, Sister Megan and our co-defendant, we participated in her uh, Democracy Now! program. She's a a very enlightened, uh, countercultural, visionary person who is uh, uh, trying to swim against the current and get the the, the truth about what's going on uh, before the public. She has opposed uh, all sorts of criminal activities conducted by the U.S. government. She's tried to uh, uh, get to the truth and uh, to spread the truth around. I'm much impressed by her, but for me as an individual, I am not a technician. I'm not highly educated. Uh, I personally plead ignorance about how those buildings went down exactly. Personally, I don't know, but I defer to the scientists to explain it all. Right. Thanks very I'd much. I'd like sir. to correspond with you folks. I'll go to your website to correspond with you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. It was nice. Very Thanks very much, sir, Dave. Good questions. Uh, my question to uh, Sister Megan and Mr. Wally Why did Obama, the president, get a Nobel Peace Prize? Do you think he's actually done anything for peace at all? And wh- why, why would they give a peace prize to a guy like that when, when he's ordered more drone strikes than anybody? Go ahead, Sister. Uh, I, I, again, I, I would not feel uh, competent to make a judgment on this. He's, we have no knowledge of who is really behind the scenes in our administration, unfortunately. He certainly began in, in his uh, campaign <clears throat> to make promises, and he, many of those promises he's certainly not been able to um, fulfill. But I think our problem is <clears throat> that we don't have independent uh, uh, politicians, people who are able to act according to their consciences. And, and so I, I, I would mm. certainly not be one to make a judgment on someone oh. in a position like that. Ma'am, we don't ma'am know what do not get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not asking you to judge Obama. I'm not asking you to put a judgment call yeah. on him. Uh, my, my point is, I have seen chimpanzees in New York Zoo do more for world peace than Obama ever has. It's, it's a mystery. Some of the things that, they, that he has said and done seem to be inconsistent with one another. I'm sure he, he said that he personally doesn't like nuclear weapons, but on the other hand, he has been part of the problem of uh, supporting the, the uh, uh, modernization uh, uh, efforts in the uh, congressional uh, 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 budgetary outlays to perpetuate uh, the U.S. Uh, nuclear uh, weaponry uh, policies into uh, perpetuity, at least until calendar year 2080, which is, mind you, 112 years 
after the 1968 Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, which was signed by the U.S., is uh, the U.S. is legally obligated to comply with that uh, the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, whose uh, provisions took effect in, in 1970. But uh, uh, there's no uh, compliance uh, 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 signs uh, afoot right now. He he said that he's against uh, torture, but then he went to Central Intelligence Agency headquarters in Langley, Virginia, and he gave them he gave the employees there a preemptive pardon uh, uh, for uh, the uh, criminal activities, including a uh, torture that had been orchestrated uh, by the policies of his uh, predecessor. I, I do not understand the man, and I don't under, uh, I don't uh, uh, judge the man, but on the other hand, the Word of God tells us that by their works shall you know them. Much of what the U.S. government does, uh, is done is done in secrecy. They talk about mistransparency, but she is very, very rarely ever cited. Absolutely. Very, very good answer there, Mr. Michael Wally. Now, now, question to you, Sister Megan. Uh, from what I see yes. today, that the power of the Pharisees has not waned from, from the ancient days. They still have the power, the power of the Pharisees, and indeed the big corporations seems to match what they had in the ancient days. Uh, do you think today, uh, on planet Earth, we are living in one big slave plantation that has evolved? Do you believe that? Well, uh, it's not a matter of believing. You've used a very good... Uh, a simile or <clears throat> a model for what is actually happening. I certainly agree with you that people um, are subjected to, uh, uh, well, as we say, the most important part of it is the miseducation and the misreporting uh, in the press and therefore uh, subjected to lies and, uh, and a, a culture of fear has pervaded. So uh, that is a, is a form of slavery, absolutely. Now, how do you think that Jesus would feel about nuclear weapons? Do you think he would uh, support them or oppose them? I mean, uh, I think we all know <laughs> it's not a matter of, of even a, 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 a giving an opinion on that. I think we all, or making a, a, a speculation, we know that the message is, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And, and the whole purpose and, and uh, work to uh, construct a bomb that can uh, d destroy the planet now 400 times the, the um, power of the first three um, nuclear weapons, at least uh, the, very, the first one that was dropped on Hiroshima. Uh, it's just, it's truly diabolical, and we... We must do all that we can to expose and oppose uh, any con further construction and work for the deconstruction and the transformation of that military de nuclear industrial complex, which is purely a money-making operation for mm -hmm. the few who have the contracts and not even the workers are getting the profits. They are, do get jobs, but the huge amount of profit that go to the uh, CEOs of these corporations. Since you both the nuclear weaponry policies of the U.S. government has nothing to do with the rule of law, with the, uh, the, the desires of, of those people who founded the United Nations in 1945 to bring about usher in uh, a world peace. Uh, it, it has nothing to do with, uh, the, with the common good. It has a lot to do with uh, 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 money making, uh, selfishness, uh, and greed, uh, nationalism, and the, uh, and the ongoing efforts often of the U.S. government to, to pickle the minds of the public through these uh, secretive, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, spin control uh, news releases. Mm, absolutely. Do, do you both think that America today is the great Babylon, as described in Revelations? Well, I mean, those were very apt uh, descriptions of the political <coughs> activities that were going on under the Roman Empire, wherever there was uh, someone trying to <coughs> control the lives of others. And we certainly have that happening in uh, our world today. We have individuals in governments, and we have um, institutions in governments which are functioning in that manner. It's a very good and apt 
model or um, parable for what is happening today. Mm. Yes. A- any thoughts there, Mr. Wally? Well, you know, they, earlier this year in May, uh, when we had one of our two felony charges overturned, the one that said that we were guilty of sabotage, so we have only one remaining charge, and they, they falsely say that we were uh, destroying government property, such as by cutting through those criminal fences that are part of the criminal activities at Oak Ridge Y-12 uh, U.S. government uh, terrorists. Uh, earlier this year, in, uh, in May, there, there was the, the 141st running of the Kentucky Derby, and a, a horse named uh, American Pharaoh won. And uh, it seems to me like whoever, the uh, which one of the uh, uh, U.S. presidential kingpin wannabes gets elected, uh, they'll, they'll uh, operate outside of the rule of law. They'll have contempt for Dr. Martin Luther King's legacy of nonviolence and uh, his opposition to the nuclear weapons. And they'll have uh, uh, no respect for the, uh, 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 the uh, common good. And, they, and they'll continue to try publicly and secretly to continue this illegal, ungodly, unpatriotic effort to dictate human affairs outside of the rule of law. They'll be like an American pharaoh of the whole wide world. Wow. And they, they, they have a stranglehold, disproportionate stranglehold on the wealth of the world, and the, the military weapons, and the war-based economy, and they want more. Amazing. Listen, thank you very much for being guests today on the People Speak Radio Show. I certainly would love to have you back again. We've got some more questions, but just no time for it. Thank you so much for appearing today on the show. Thank you. Thank you for all your questions and your comments. It's been fantastic having you, and, and certainly we, I'd, I'd like to ask you some more about what it was like in prison, whether you got treated okay or, and whether uh, the people were supporting you and, and how much support you've seen since then. But we'll have to leave that for another show. Join us up coming soon on the People Who Speak radio show when I talk with political artist and author Kate Howarth and esteemed researcher Morgan Reynolds. Stay tuned for those interviews coming soon. Big thanks go out to the producers, Mike and Donald, to all my friends throughout the world and all the guys who give me such support. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You can tune into my own channel called Stop Funding Israel. But for now, for me, take care and bye until next time. One bright sunny morning in the shadow of the sea. Uranium fuel was produced back in 1943 and has been continued to being produced for to fuel the nuclear weapons that have continued to be made since World War II when they were used in 19 August of 1945. No. And we we needed to um, remind the people, remind the workers. Uh, that this was all uh, illegal work according to the United States Constitution, which holds uh, the United States uh, accountable to all uh, international laws and treaties, which it signs uh, <clears throat> and supersedes uh, any activity that um, the United States uh, are, it, it intends to do. So. The construction and the production and certainly the use of ever again nuclear bombs has been um, since at least 1960, uh, 1968, 1970 when the Non-Proliferation Treaty was signed, illegal criminal activity. So we wanted to go in to explain that to the workers and to try to end and call them to transform that work into that which is sustainable uh, and uh, life-enhancing, which is very possible to be done. Wow. So so your protest basically was inspired because you believe that what these workers are doing is contributing to a criminal activity that is state-sponsored and state-organized. Exactly. Goodness me. Uh, Mr. Michael Wally, in your opinion, uh, nuclear weapons, are they part of the pursuit (coughs) of life... Of course, there's no need for nuclear weapons. Uh, <clears throat> as Michael has said, uh, they're mutually assured destruction, uh, and that's the only thing that could ever happen. Uh, obviously, there would be retaliation if one ever were used, but it would be against all laws of humanity, the laws of war and, and the non-proliferation treaty laws, and many others, uh, even to consider planning and constructing nuclear bombs. So um, certainly they're of no use. We don't want to destroy our planet. 
the existence of them, the, uh, the proliferation of them, the modernization of them, and uh, the uh, talk about perpetuating their existence by the U.S. government at uh, Oak Ridge and uh, Los Alamos and various uh, 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 vessels on the high seas and ports and nuclear weapon submarines, that's a clear indication that the uh, rule of international law has been thrown out the window long ago and that uh, uh, various nations of the world allied to the United States uh, have every intention of continuing its uh, faulting efforts to dictate human affairs. Now, now, first of all, what got you started? What got, in, what got you inspired to follow uh, the group into this uh, anti-nuclear activism, Mr. Michael Wally? First of all, I was uh, uh, encouraged to join by um, uh, Sister Megan Rice. She was the one who selected the Oak Ridge uh, Rye 12 uh, U.S. government uh, nuclear weapons terrorist site as the site for our uh, protest. We are, as a Plowshare uh, group, we are part of liberty and, and peace and happiness for all mankind. No, the, they are of the uh, spirit of anti grace. They are uh, illegal. They are state terroristic in their nature, and they must be eradicated. And, and what is the, the threat that nuclear weapons poses to us as a people on this earth? Uh, it uh, threatens uh, uh, all human life with uh, extinction. It, uh, uh, it, it, it threatens all, all of the people. Uh, falsely, uh, it is said in various nations that uh, nuclear weapons are providing uh, security, and they're uh, stockpiling, use, refurbishment, perpetuation is uh, uh, is said to be serving the national defense needs of various nations. This is uh, out and out on truth. They are uh, 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 violations of the uh, security rights. We all have a right to security of person. Uh, we cannot accept the situation in which uh, uh, criminal weapons are being used. Uh, with the false, in the false uh, 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 concept that they are providing defense for any anybody in the room. Well, the, they they pose the uh, the whole nuclear thing. They they invited it into our society as being part of uh, to help us get cheap energy and, and clean fuel. But that hasn't been the case. Energy prices have gone up. We've seen these uh, the, these uh, things that they're using the the uranium and the plutonium being used for nefarious purposes for not only defense but for offensive weapons. Uh, now, Mr. Michael Wally and Sister Megan, uh, in your opinion, do we need nuclear weapons at all? Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. Welcome back, everybody, to the People Who Speak radio show. I'm your host for tonight, Steve Johnson. The People Who Speak show normally airs every Tuesday from 6 to 7 Pacific and 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern on the BBS radio network. You can participate during the show with call-in questions for our guests, toll free in the United States and Canada on 1-888-429-5471. This is a fantastic show tonight. We're talking to two very special guests right here, an anti-nuclear activist and an outspoken advocate of human rights. We are talking tonight to Sister Megan Rice, 85, a Roman Catholic nun of the Society of the Holy Child Jesus, and a fellow activist, Mr. Michael Wally, who was also part of a group that broke into a nuclear facility and spent time in prison. We are very honored to have them with us on the show today. Welcome to the People Speak Radio Show, Sister Rice and Mr. Wally. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful to have you here. Can you, uh, first of all, Sister Rice, can you please describe to our listeners the course of events that actually got you incarcerated into a, a facility um, because of your activism? Well, we were <coughs> very concerned when we realized that uh, the United States government had appropriated uh, probably up to $10 billion, uh, certainly $6 uh, billion in the one facility at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where the first uh, fuel for the first three highly uh, enriched fuel... Uh, 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 actions that have started ever since uh, uh, 1980, uh, over 100 of them 
uh, have happened. Uh, we had meetings before we did it in uh, July the uh, 28th of 2012, the United Nations Year of the Collective. Uh, Sister Megan was the one who named our action. Wow. So, so Sister Megan, what got you started in uh, protesting this particular avenue of anti-humanity? Uh, <coughs> my awareness of the evil uh, that uh, <coughs> is involved in the intention to construct such a bomb uh, goes back many decades. I happen to live close to the uh, origin of the Manhattan Project, secret as it was, and uh, at the age of 10 and 11, I knew that secret work was going on in the physics building uh, at Columbia University, which was the beginnings of the Manhattan Project. And I knew that anything that is secret must be evil because uh, uh, it, it has to be hidden from the public. And uh, But I didn't really understand, even after the bombs were dropped uh, on uh, August 6th and August 9th, uh, the terrible repercussions <clears throat> of this construction, in, uh, which ended in 1945. I mean, at least the, those three bombs were constructed. Um, but gradually, I uh, continued to be aware of, of um, the actual makeup of nuclear weapons.